A lot of lovers get into an argument and end up apologizing to themselves, but, this wasn't the case for Catherine Knight who felt murder and mutilation were better options. Catherine, who was an Australian abattoir worker did not only stab her lover 37 times with a butcher knife in February of 2000, she also chopped him up, cooked him, and prepared to serve him to his own children. Hello and welcome to Inside Crimes, please hit the subscribe button and turn on your post notifications for more crime stories. Catherine Mary Knight was born on October 24, 1955, in Tenterfield, Australia. Catherine who was raised in a dysfunctional family environment, was conceived from an adulterous relationship between her mother, Barbara Ruffin, and her father, Ken Knight. Barbara Ruffin wasn't only already a mother of four boys with another man, named Jack Ruffin, reports says she had also met Ken Knight through her husband. Due to backlash from their local community regarding their scandalous affair, Barbara and Ken decided to move out of town, where they later had additional four children, including twin girls born in 1955 in Tenterfield. Catherine Knight was one of these twin girls. Knight was said to have had a chaotic childhood. Her father was a violent alcoholic who would force her mother into having sex multiple times in a day. Knight had once claimed that she was sexually assaulted by several family members until the age of 11, though, her father never molested her. According to reports, Knight complained to her mother that one of her partners wanted her to take part in sexual activities she did not want to perform, Barbara then told her to put up with it and stop complaining. Knight who attended Muswellbrook High School, was known as a bully who stood over smaller children. She had assaulted a boy in school with a weapon and had also got into an altercation with one of her teachers who got her injured out of self-defense. Knight left school at the age of 15 without ever learning how to read or write. At that time, she had gotten a work at a clothing factory. Twelve months later, she landed what she called her dream job at a slaughterhouse, where she cut out the internal organs of animals. Catherine Knight loved her job so much that she was quickly promoted to the boning section of the local abattoir. She was then given her own set of butcher's knives. Everywhere Catherine Knight lived, she developed the habit of hanging the knives over her bed, just in case she ever wanted to use them, which of course, came in handy when she needed to skin her lover. In 1973, Knight met co-worker David Stanford Kellett at the slaughterhouse. He was a heavy drinker who would often get into fights. During his drunken scuffles, Knight would step in and back him up with her fists. In their town, Knight was well known for physically threatening anyone who upset her. David Kellett soon realized that Knight was capable of doing more than a little damage with her fists. Soon enough, he found himself being controlled by her. Kellett was forced by Knight to marry her in 1974. They both arrived at the wedding service on her motorcycle with a very drunk Kellett. As soon as they arrived, Barbara, Knight's mother, warned Kellett about her daughter's temper, saying that Knight had a screw loose somewhere. She further advised Kellett to be careful with the way he acts around her daughter because she could kill him. On their wedding night, Knight had tried to strangle Kellett because, he fell asleep from exhaustion after consummating their marriage three times. Knight who wanted more rounds of sex, wasn't too pleased with her husband, hence, her decision to kill him in his sleep. Luckily, Kellett woke up and succeeded in fighting off Knight. Although, she had tried to kill him only one day into their marriage, the union lasted for ten more years. The marriage, however became extremely toxic. Due to pressure, constant physical abuse and, no peace of mind, Kellett became unfaithful, and had once left his wife and their two daughters in the middle of the night. On discovering Kellett's unfaithfulness, Knight placed their two-months-old baby on the railway line shortly before a train was due. However, the baby was spared when a homeless man spotted the baby and rescued her minutes before the train would pass. That same day, Knight had also threatened several people with a stolen axe. She was arrested and taken to St. Elmo's Hospital, where she was initially diagnosed with postnatal depression, after witnesses saw her violently throwing and pushing her second child in a stroller down a busy street. Catherine recovered and signed herself out the following day. 
After physically assaulting and threatening to kill those she demanded to take her to Queensland where Colette, her husband was, the police apprehended and admitted her to the Morissette Psychiatric Hospital where she told nurses that she intended to kill the mechanic who had repaired Kellett's car because, that made it possible for him to leave her. She had also mentioned killing Colette and his mother once she gets to Queensland. The police informed Colette but, despite the threat, Kellett took Knight back when she was released from the hospital. Nonetheless, their reunion didn't last long, as they both went their separate ways in 1984, after too much toxicity in the marriage. Shortly after her breakup with Kellett, Knight met 38-year-old minor, David Saunders, in 1986. A few months later, Saunders moved in with Knight and her two daughters. However, he kept his own apartment in Scone. Knight became suspicious and jealous about what he did when she wasn't around and would often throw him outside her house. Saunders would then go back to his apartment, where Knight would often go to beg him to come back. Bottom line is, just like her past relationships, this one also quickly grew toxic and violent. In May 1987, Knight cut the throat of Saunders' two-month-old puppy in front of him just to show him what she was capable of if he ever thought of cheating or leaving her. She then knocked him out with a fry pan to further drive home her point. Regardless of all these, they still stayed together and even had a daughter, Sarah, in 1988. This made Saunders to put a deposit on a house. Knight then paid in full when her worker's bonus came through in 1989. She decorated the whole house with animal skins, skulls, horns, rusty animal traps, leather jackets, old boots, machetes, rakes and pitchforks. Every portion of the house was covered with her invented decorations. Saunders moved back to Scone after Knight hit him in the face with an iron and had attempted to kill him with a pair of scissors. Later, when he returned, he found out that she had cut up all his clothes. Saunders who was scared for his life, then took a long service leave and went into hiding. Knight did all she could to find him, but no one admitted to knowing his whereabouts. Some months later, Saunders returned to see his daughter, only to find out that Knight had gone to the police and unjustly told them that she was afraid of him. They had issued her an apprehended violence order against him. In 1991, Knight met 43-year-old former abattoir co-worker named, John Chillingworth. The couple stayed together for three years and had a child called, Eric. Eric was Knight's first son. No violent incidents were reported about their relationship but, it ended after Knight left Chillingworth for a man she was having an affair with, John Charles Thomas Price. Catherine Knight and John Price's relationship began with no complications. John Price whose marriage had ended in 1988, had three children. While the last born who was two years old remained with his former wife, the two older children lived with him and seemed to like Knight, when she moved in with them in 1995. John Price made enough money as a minor to keep Knight comfortable. However, in 1998, when she suggested they marry and he refused, she turned violent. She then videotaped items Price had allegedly stolen from his workplace and sent it to his boss. This action got Price fired. He initially kicked Knight out but, a few months later, they started seeing each other again. However, this time, he refused to let her move back in with him. According to their friends and neighbors, Knight's violence then began to get out of hand. Due to this, Price's friends decided to cut all ties with him as long as he stayed with Knight. In February of 2000, an argument between John Charles Thomas Price and Knight ensued, such that, Price had been assaulted multiple times with Knight attempting to stab him in the chest. Finally fed up, he kicked her out of his house and, on the 29th of February, he stopped at the Scone Magistrate's Court on his way to work and took out a restraining order against her in an attempt to keep him and his children safe. That afternoon, Price discussed his concerns for his safety and told his co-workers that if he ever went missing, it was because Knight had murdered him. They pleaded with him not to go home but, he insisted saying he was afraid Knight might hurt his children and he needed to protect them. On getting home from work, Knight was not around and, she had sent his children for a sleepover at a friend's house. Price then followed his usual routine of checking in with the neighbors before going to bed at 11 p.m. 
Shortly after, Knight came home and made herself dinner, watched TV for a few minutes, showered, and went into Price's room. She woke him up and both of them had sex, and he went back to bed. Catherine Knight then decided it was time to bring out her butcher knife, close to her bed, where she had always kept them. According to reports, she stabbed Price 37 times and, evidence had it that he had woken up during the attack but could not fight her off. He later died from his stab wounds. Knight then skinned him and hung his body from a meat hook in the sitting room. She further decapitated him and cut up pieces of his body to cook in a dish with potato, pumpkin, beets, zucchini, cabbage, squash, and gravy. She made a dish for herself using Price's flesh. However, the half-discarded content later found at the crime scene suggested that she couldn't finish her meal. After taking a large amount of pills, Knight laid down next to the headless, mutilated body of Price, and subsequently passed out. The next morning, Price's co-workers heeded his warning and called the police after he didn't show up at work. The police arrived the gruesome murder scene to find a comatose Catherine Knights who was quickly detained. When she woke up, she claimed to have no memory of what had happened the previous night. According to reports, when the police entered the kitchen, they found Price's head, boiling in a pot of vegetables on the stove. On the table, they found two full plates of Knight despicable meal, each labeled with a name. It was later realized that Knight had planned to serve John Price's body parts to his children. She was arraigned on the 2nd of March 2001 on the charge of murdering Price, to which she entered a plea of not guilty. Her trial which was initially fixed for 23rd of July 2001, was later adjourned due to her counsel's illness. Her trial then commenced in October but, it didn't get very far. Knight changed her plea to guilty and the judge adjourned the case without testimony. On the 8th of November 2001, Justice O'Keefe pointed out that the nature of the crime and Knight's lack of remorse required a severe penalty. He sentenced her to life imprisonment, refused to fix a non-parole period and ordered that her papers be marked never to be released. That was the first time in history, a woman in Australia was given a life sentence without parole. Till today, Knight still maintains her innocence and refuses to accept responsibility for her actions. She had once appealed her life sentence before in June 2006 and was denied almost immediately. She is still serving her life sentence at Silverwater Women's Correctional Center. She makes about $70 a week assembling airline headsets in prison. According to reports, Catherine Knight hardly gets visited by friends or family members. She is said to have reportedly found religion and helps other women to settle their differences. According to some source, the death of John Price was premeditated. Catherine Knight had once told one of her children that she wanted to kill Price. The reason is not known but, according to her, Price was a rapist and child molester. This claim was declared false and could not be proven in court. Due to the gruesome and horrific crime scene, the investigators in charge of the case had to seek counseling because of what they had seen.